what is up guys, my name is Guillaume, this is Thurman's Guitars and Basses and welcome to this week's episode of Hit The Tone where we talk about the song Fire of High by Rammstein starting with our guitar setup. I try to like keep, keep it a little bit German, just a, little, just a hint of German. I don't want people to think that I actually speak German. It's like, no, just the Rammstein songs. <laughs> And Rammstein is probably one of the bands that I really wanted to avoid on this format because it is such an iconic sound, like a sound that really defined the whole genre of, of that industrial metal type of thing. And I really didn't want to go there, but then I tried a bunch of things with that setup, was happy with it, so I thought, let's just put this out there. Don't judge me too harshly. But as far as the guitar setup goes, um, both uh, Paul Landers and Richard, I forgot his last name. I feel horrible about that. The other guitar player have been very consistent about the guitars they've, they've been using in the studio. So on Paul's side, a lot of Gibson Les Pauls, and on Richard's side, a whole lot of his own uh, ESP LTD signature guitars. But I think altogether, you're just looking at a dual humbucker setup, medium to high output. There's some EMG 81s in those LTDs, obviously. But I think as far as the tracking goes on Paul's side, any sort of Gibson Les Paul with, you you know, again, medium to high output on buckers will do just fine. So I'm using the Studio Les Paul, the usual one. I'll be playing in the bridge position with both volume and tone all the way up. Now let's talk about amps and pedals. And there again, the core cool Rammstein sound really hasn't changed much throughout the years. And it's a very uh, signature blend of a Mesa Boogie dual... Um, mess is it Mesa Boogie when it's a dual rectifier or is it just Mesa Engineering? Now I'm confused. Anyways, a Mesa dual rectifier stack on one side and a, a Tech 21 Sansamp uh, Paul Landers signature on the other. And that's been throughout pretty much their whole career. Now there's obviously been some variations here and there, some different heads that might have been used in the studio, but I'm gonna base myself off of that very signature sound. So really hard to blend, really hard to use a Mesa in such like, you know, I, even more so if you guys are trying to do this at home. So what I've been doing is using the same unit as last week, which is the Bus GX100, and that allows me to run two amps uh, in a stereo signal path before mixing them back together and going into the JCM800 combo, into the effects return of it to just use the power amp and then the speakers and the, you know, all of that thing. So my setup right now in the GX100 is two amps, so the maximum amp on one side that is supposed to emulate the, uh, the Tech 21 not namely, but I think the gain structure is really close to it. And on the other side, a dual rectifier stack as well. Gain fairly high on both of them, and I'm boosting the front end with what Boss calls the uh, natural overdrive. I'm just extremely happy about that setup. And as you might have heard in the intro, there's that sort of lo-fi, really cut down part for the, uh, the intro of the song. And for that, I just added a, an EQ, post EQ, so after the amps, and cut down all the, all the low end, all the high end, and I'm just keeping like two slices of the mid range to get that sort of lo-fi guitar sound. I'll play uh, the, the actual sound first, and then I'll, I'll show you the, uh, the lo-fi and we'll put some uh, screen captures on the, on the, on the screen. So I'm really, really happy with that sound, which is the only reason why we're filming this episode and why we might release it. We'll see how it comes out through the speakers. But I really like that. I think it's a pretty cool setup and fairly uh, simple way of recreating such an iconic guitar sound. So I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna go on to the final part of the video, which is, as usual, the most important, and is how to play the riff. Starting with the usual recommendations, uh, go check out the link in description to see all the gear that I'm using today, as well as some other units that might cut it for you, maybe at different price points as well, but so that you can get the same kind of setup uh, going as what I have now. Now, this particular song is going to be tuned in drop D. It is not the most common tuning for Rammstein. I would say drop C is 
C, C sharp are probably a bit more common if you want to learn most of their songs, but there's still a bunch to choose from in drop D. So standard tuning all the way, E to E, and then you drop the low E a full step down to D. You probably won't have to change your strings uh, for that kind of detuning if it's your first time doing it. But with that in mind, let's have a look at how to play the riff exactly. And I think this is sort of the quintessential Rammstein riff progression violence type of thing. It's not extremely complicated to fret, even though you do have like a hammer on from eight to 10 there. But the difficulty is first, the precision, like the, that really incisive aspect of their guitar playing and of, of their guitar sound, but also just the sheer speed of it. There's quite a bit of Rammstein riffs that you you sort of assume wrongly that it's just da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, but they're actually picking every single note in there, which you know ends up being pretty fast. So if you're just beginning with guitars, that might be a little bit of a challenge uh, for the right hand. But that being said, uh, I think mostly on the fretting side, you won't really have um, a lot of issues learning that kind of riff. And I think just, it's a good place to start for drop tuning, that kind of powerhouse industrial metal type of thing. It's just extremely satisfying to play. And yeah, it's, you know, fairly accessible, I would say. But with that said, I think that is it, guys. You have all the tools you need to hit the tone on Feuerfrei by Rammstein. As usual, I hope that video was useful and that maybe you've learned a thing or two today. And if so, please consider liking it, subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on everything that is coming real, real soon. Also, please don't forget to let me know in the comment section which songs you'd like me to cover next and I'll get to them as soon as I can. But in the meantime, I wish you all a fantastic week and I'll see you next Monday in a new episode of Hit The Tone. Bye.